I hate it here. It's a kitchen I like. It's nice in there. It's cozy. I can't go in there. You know why? Because he's always in there, banging about the place, scraping all the leavings into the bin, driving me out of the kitchen. Why don't you bring your tea in here? I don't want to drink my tea in here. I hate it in here. I want to drink my tea in there. See you game football later. You want to come? I'm talking to you. No, I'm training this afternoon. We're doing six hours with Blackie. That's not till five o'clock. You've got time to see you game football before five o'clock. It's the first game of the season. No, I'm not going. Why not? Sam, get in here. What? Washing up. And what else? Getting rid of your leavings. Put them in the bin, eh? Right in. What point are you trying to prove? No point. Oh, yes, you are. That's why you bang about the place like that. You resent making my breakfast, don't you? That's what it is, isn't it? That's why you bang around the place like that. Scraping all the tea out of the teapot. Scraping all the leavings into the bin. <coughs> That's why you do that. Every single stinking morning. Listen, Sam. I want to say something to you, from my heart. I want you to get rid of these feelings of resentment you've got towards me. I wish I could understand them. I have ever given you cause? Never. When Dad died, he said to me, Max, look after your brothers. That's exactly what he said. How could he say that if he was dead? What? How could he speak if he was dead? Before he died, Sam. Just before! You think I'm joking? Those were his last words, his last sacred words. You hear that, Joey? He'll stop at nothing. He's even prepared to spit in the memory of our dad. What kind of son were you? You went wick. You spent half your time doing crossword puzzles. We took you to that butcher shop. You could barely sweep the dust off the floor. We took McGregor in, and he could run the place by the end of the week. But let me tell you something. I respected my father. Not only as a man, but as a number one butcher. I carved my first carcass at his knee. I can remember his name and blood. I gave birth to three grown men, all off my own back. What have you ever done? What have you done? You tit. You don't want to finish the washing up. Look, here's the cloth. To try to get rid of these feelings of resentment. After all, we are brothers. Do you want the cloth? Here you are, take it. Look, I'm sorry, this, this just isn't working for me. What is the problem? Well, he's putting that far too close to my face. It's just, it's getting in my personal space. I'm saying your personal space does not exist anymore. I have a process to work through here. I don't give a shit about your process, okay? Look, this I... is a rehearsal and we haven't got time to fuck about with nitty witty things because someone's doing that in your face. I'm trying to stay in character. And you know what? On that note, on that note, another thing. Must I absolutely wear this hat? I imagine so. It says so in the script. But it's ridiculous! Ridiculous? Ridiculous? That cat represents the working classes of the oppression by the bourgeois they just wear it. I just don't think my character would wear something like this. I don't pay to think, I pay to act. This isn't fucking standard lasky, so just shut up, say lines and avoid the furniture, right? Now, shut up and listen to this. The empty form of reason about the fullness of instinct which is right. You stand for reason, your wife is instinct. It's a mixing up of the past, according to which you who act your own part become the puppet of yourself. Do you understand? No. Well, neither do I, but let's get on with it. It's sure glorious to fail there. Anyway. Excuse me. What is it? I'm in a rehearsal, and you know fully well no one is to come in during rehearsals. Who are you and what do you want? As a matter of fact, we've come in search of an author. An author? What author? Any author, madam. Are you trying to be funny? No, what are you saying? We bring you a drama. We may be your fortune. Would you mind going away? We haven't the time to waste with mad people. Oh, madam, you know well that life is filled with infinite absurdities, some of which you don't need to appear plausible, but they are true. What the devil is he talking about? I say that to reverse the ordinary process may well be considered a madness. That is, to create credible situations in order that they may appear true. But permit me to observe that if this be madness, 
This is a sole raison de trait of your profession, ladies and gentlemen. So it's our profession to you, seeing one worthy of madmen, then? Well, it's an interesting tree which isn't true. Isn't that your mission? To give life to fantastic characters on stage? My dear sir, the acting profession is a noble one. Is it our fault that playwrights give a stupid comedy and play to represent puppets of human beings? Here, here. Nevertheless, we are very proud to do these great works on these very boards. Then do you not tell stories? Of course. Then we have stories to tell. All we require is an author. There is no author here. No script. Well, yes, but we're making our own adaptation. Then we can be your new work. Brilliant! you say? We bring you a drama to make seem true which isn't true. Isn't that what you do here? Well, would it not be better to submit to the pure and structured energy of the imagination when one can be born to life in so many shapes and so many forms? As tree, as stone, as water, as butterfly, or as woman. So one may also be born a character in a play. So we have been born as characters. We carry within us a tragedy! <laughs> Please believe us. We really are six of the most fascinating characters you can imagine. We have been abandoned. Yes, abandoned. Rejected by the author who created us, who is no longer willing or able to put us into a story. Discarded as an idea. A character whose story has been told and they laugh at death. He cannot die. Immortality. Who would not want that? Immortality. Through an author who nourishes us, cares for us. We want to live. <laughs> for eternity. <laughs> Only for a moment in you. And where is the script? It is in us. Do you need drama? Passion? What oh, passion? Only you knew my passion for him. <laughs> Behave yourself. And please, do not laugh in that fashion. Is she mad? Mad? No, she's worse than mad. Worse? Worse? Listen. Stage this drama for us at once, then you will see. When this little darling here, isn't she a darling? Darling, darling, when God suddenly takes this dear little child away from that poor mother there, you will see me run away. Yes, I shall be off, but the moment hasn't arrived yet. After what has taken place between him and me, I shan't stay around to see her desperate misery. Her whimpering gasp, that hateful creep. Look at him. Look at him. See how indifferent, how frigid he is. Because he is a legitimate son. He despises me. Despises this poor little one here. Because we are bastards. And he doesn't want to recognize her as his mother. She who is the common mother of us all. He looks down upon her as if she were the mother of us three bastards. Wretch! Stop it! For the sake of the children! As you see, depth of feeling is not a problem here. Quick! A chair! A chair for this poor old widow! I beg you, stop this man from carrying out his loathsome plan. I don't understand this at all. Is this lady your wife? Yes, my wife. Well, how can she be a widow if you're alive? Her story lies in exactly that paradox. She's had a lover, a man who ought to be here. Fortunately for her, he's dead. We are in mourning, as you see. He isn't here, you see. Not because he is dead. He isn't here because her story isn't the drama of the love of two men for one woman. She isn't a woman. She's a mother. And her story lies in these three children she's had by two different men. Am I happy? Are you saying that I wanted them? That was his doing. The author. The author! It was him who gave me that other man. Who forced me to go away with him? Who did it give me a life of my own? That isn't true. It's not true. No, it just isn't true. Then what can you know about it? It isn't true. Don't believe her. Do you know why she says that? But that fellow there, she tortures herself, destroys herself from the neglect of that son there. Because she wants him to believe that if she abandoned him when he was only two years old, it was because he made her do so. He forced me to it. And I call God to witness it. Ask him, go on, ask him if it isn't true. Let him speak. 
You were not in a position to know anything about it. I know you lived in peace and happiness with my father when he lived. Can you deny it? I can't deny it. He was always full of affection and kindness for you. Why do you want to make me appear so ungrateful, daughter? I don't want to offend your father. I didn't leave my home or my son from any fault of my own, nor from any willful passion. This is true. This is my duty. Go. What's so far? Time for a tea break. Um, equity rules and all. Coming? Right, you've got 15 minutes. Great. You're going to uh, find it now. Words. Words. And more words. I have done more than use words to quieten the remorse in me. Yes, there was a bit of money. It's quite a bit of money. You're vile. Vile? The money was there in a purple envelope on a little mahogany table in the back of Madame Pache's shop. You know Madame Pache? One of those ladies who chop poor girls of good family under the pretext of their doing a little sewing for clients. Where's your shame? Shame? This is my revenge. I am dying for that scene. The room. I can see it. Here is the window of the first neck curtain. There it is off. The mirror. I am almost nude, you know. But you don't blush. I'll leave that to him. I don't understand this at all. Naturally enough, but please let me speak before you believe all she's trying to blame you with. Oh, yes, but explain it in your own way. But don't you see that the whole trouble lies here in words? Words! Each one of us has a whole world of things. Each one of us our own special world. And how can we ever come to an understanding if the words I utter, the sense and value of things as I see them, whilst you who listen to me must inevitably translate them according to the conception of things one has within himself? We think we understand each other, but we never really do. But look here, this woman takes all my pity for her as an especially ferocious form of cruelty. But you drove me away. Do you hear her? I drove her away. She really believes I sent her away. You know how to talk, and I don't. But believe me, when he married me, who knows why, I became a poor and significant woman. But good heavens, it was just your humility as I married you. I love the simplicity in you. Excuse me, are we going to rehearse? Yes, let's just hear them out. It's just I've got the chance to some voiceover work. Go away! You, get a move on. Very well, then listen. In my service, I had a clerk, a poor man who was full of devotion for her. They were kindred souls, in fact, without, however, the least suspicion of any evil existing. They were incapable of even thinking it. So he thought of it for them? No. I wanted them to be happy, and I wanted happiness too. They kept on making car fires at each other. Furtive little looks that just drove me mad. Then why didn't you send her away, this clerk of yours? Precisely what I did, madam. But then I had to watch this here woman moping around the house like an animal without a master. Like an animal one has taken in out of pity. Yes. But to banish me, to take my son away from me, how could you? But not from cruelty. I did it so he should grow up strong and healthy in the countryside. As one can see. Sort of. But I'm a man. And I have natural urges that she would not satisfy. I can live with this woman no longer. Not so much for the boredom she inspired me with, more for the pity I felt for her. <laughs> and so you turned me out? I left you well provided for. Yes, I sent her away to that man. I gave her her freedom from me. Oh, to free himself. You were never out of my sight until that man took you away to another town, like the jealous bull he was. Till then, I had watched tenderly as your new family grew up around you. She can bear witness to that. Ah, <coughs> oh, yes, that's true enough. When I was a kid, so high, you know, parts over my shoulder, and knickers longer than my skirt. I used to see him waiting outside the school gate for me. I came to see how I was growing up. This is outrageous. No. Why? After she left, I felt alone. The house was empty. I was like a day's fly alone in the empty rooms. This boy here was educated away from home, and when he returned, he was like a stranger to me. No mother to stand between him and me, he grew up entirely for himself, on his own apart. I was driven by curiosity at first, then by some tender sentiment towards her family. The 
faucet had begun to gradually fill up the emptiness around. I wanted to think of her as happy in filling out the daily duties of life. I wanted to think of her happy away from me. Yes, I used to watch the child come out of school. Yes, yes, true. He used to follow me in the street, smiled at me, waved his hand, like this. I would look at him with interest, wondering who he might be. I told my mother, who guessed it was, then she didn't want to send me back to school for some days. And when I finally went back, there he was again, looking so ridiculous with a paper parcel in his hands. He came close to me, caressed me, and drew out a fine straw hat from the paper parcel with a bouquet of flowers all for me. Fantasy! Complete fantasy! Look, where is it going? The drama is coming now, madam. Something new, complex, something most interesting. As soon as my father died, life was miserable. We came back here. I didn't think after so many years apart and all that had happened. How was I to know? I found work at a dress shop as a dressmaker, working for Madame Pache. A real high class place, you know. Downstairs, all high fashion and good manners. But upstairs, all the things for sale. But believe me, it never entered my mind that when the old hag offered me work, she had her eye on my daughter. Hello, Mama. Do you know what that woman did when I brought her back to work my mother had finished? She would point out to me that I had torn one of the frocks and I would have to work off the price until my mother could afford it. And one day, one of the customers was. Him, him, yes, sir. An old client, very seems to be played superb. And your mother found you together? No, 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 in time, in time. I recognised her in time. I, I took her back to my house. You can understand now her position and mine. Her, as you see her, and mine who can no longer look her in the face. It's a joke. You wanted to bring me up as a respectable young lady. Sensible clothes and nice manners, all to make him feel better about himself. But what's done cannot be undone. This is the essence of tragedy. In a moment such as this, we were all suspended in time and space, branded by a single act. But you cannot judge me on that one terrible moment. This girl surprised me in a place where she ought not to have been. And now, she's trying to crucify me for it. We need to consider the position of others. Leave me out of this. This has nothing to do with me. Oh, what, and you're not involved. This has nothing to do with me. And you know well enough I wasn't made to be mixed up in all this with the rest of you. We are only common scum. He is a fine gentleman, but he knows how much he's hurt me. Me? Oh, yes. It's easy to pay me out to be the villain of the piece. But can you imagine how I felt? Being the son of the ass, the only child. No one day this little smut turns up asking for my father and dragging that child along with her and asking for money. How do you think I felt? And then, then, my wonderful father introduced me to a stranger and says, this is your mother. Can you imagine what was going on in my head? So call me out of this. I have no lines, no purpose. I'm an unrealized character in this play. I just don't fit in it at all. I won't speak. I can't speak. I refuse everything. How can you be so cruel? Look at this poor child. She's the silent one because you won't allow her an identity. She's cut off, isolated from all of these words. What do you want from me? We are all our own versions of ourselves, but until you give us life, then nothing can ever truly come out. Nothing can ever happen without you. Or you. Please, will our story be told? All right, I'll get the action back. No need, we are born for the stage. All we require is not. I'm not a writer. We cannot trust writers. All we need is a stage. All right, all right. Oi, you lot! Early lunch for you, back in an hour, okay? Hey.